Grrr, the Toxic Avenger. The only superhero to come out of New Jersey. And definitely the ugliest. But hey, don't let that fool you from his complete brutal badassery. Seriously, if you piss off this giant toxic mutated muscle, then chances are you're going to suffer one brutal death. That'll no doubt end with limbs getting ripped off and your guts hanging out. The Toxic Avenger is the brainchild of Troma founder Lloyd Kaufman, and it tells the story of Melvin, a skinny weakling who works as a janitor at a health and fitness clinic in Tromaville, where he also suffers abuse at the hands of the local bullies, who all hang out at the health spot. But after a prank gone wrong, Melvin finds himself landing in a can of toxic waste, where he horrifically mutates into what looks like a cross between sloth from the Goonies and a potato, where he becomes the Toxic Avenger. Now bulked up with super strength, Melvin takes it upon himself to mop up crime, as he takes on some of Tromaville's most brutal criminals, and along the way even finds love, proving that any skinny nerdy kid can become a crime-fighting badass and get the hop babes. All you need is a can of toxic waste to hideously deform you. Get ready to take a trip into Tromaville, guys, as we explore the legend of the Toxic Avenger by looking into nine plus one things that you may not know about the Toxic Avenger. A movie so outrageous, disgusting, gratuitous, insanely trashy, and violent, how could anyone not love it? So let's do this now. Number 10, Toxie was played by three people. Yes, even though Melvin, aka the Toxic Avenger, is one character, it took three people to bring him to life. First, there was Mark Torgel, who played Melvin in his normal form. And yeah, is this guy your stereotypical geek or what? I mean, just look at that face. It screams, please steal my lunch money and give me a wedgie. And then finally, when Melvin is in his mutated form, he's played by Mitch Cohen, who of course was under heavy makeup and clearly had a much muscular build. And then finally, there was Kenneth Kessler, who provided the voice of the Toxic Avenger, giving the character a comically awkward yet still kind of heroic superhero voice. So it was thanks to these three talents that Toxie was brought onto the screen and into our gore-loving hearts. I think it's also worth mentioning that actor John Altamora, who played the Toxic Avenger in part two and three, recently died. Rest in peace, buddy. You'll be greatly missed, but your efforts live on. Number nine, the movie made Troma what it is. Troma Entertainment has become an independent film company known for its outrageous horror splatter fests. Thanks to giving us films such as Tromeo and Juliet and Poultry Geist Night of the Chicken Dead. However, it's the Toxic Avenger that made Troma what it is today. Founded in 1974 by Lloyd Kaufman and Michael Herz, the anti-Hollywood company mainly focused on outrageous sex comedies. But when the Toxic Avenger came out in 1986, Troma found a new identity, that being over-the-top violent horror movies, which Troma would become known for releasing from then on, and fans of hardcore and alternative movies in general can't seem to get enough of Troma. So thanks, Melvin. You literally made Troma the awesome beast it is today. So... In a way, the Toxic Avenger created an enterprise and subgenre. Hey, it's not bad. Number eight, the idea spawned from Rocky. Yes, the idea of the Toxic Avenger grew from the unlikeliest of places, Rocky, as in Adrian. You see, Troma co-founder Lloyd Kaufman was working as a pre-production supervisor on the famous Sylvester Stallone movie when he got the idea of a horror movie set in a health club. As one day on set, he read an article saying, quote, horror is dead. And so from there, the gears started turning in his head to make his own movie about a muscle man taking on the world while trying to be the best that he can be. Only Kaufman's hero was a lot more hideous and grotesque than Rocky. 
And thus, this was the start of Kaufman's journey into making his toxic masterpiece. Number seven, the Toxic Avenger was going to have a different name. The Toxic Avenger is a great name. It's both funny and comical, letting you know straight away what kind of movie you're in for. But at the same time, it also sounds really badass. And it goes with the character, a hero who is here to save us and powered by toxic waste. Bravo. However, the character originally had a different name. He was going to be called the Monster Hero. And yeah, it doesn't sound anywhere near as catchy or as powerful as the Toxic Avenger. The Monster Hero sounds like something a kid made up. So thank God they came up with a better name than Monster Hero, as Toxic Avenger is a way superior name. However, it was only in the movie's post-production that the name was changed to Toxic Avenger, which is why in the original movie, no one ever refers to Melvin as the Toxic Avenger. Just imagine it guys, we might have lived in a world where if we see a picture of the Toxic Avenger, we'll be saying, oh look, it's the Monster Hero. And that's just wrong! Number six, the sequels. So because the Toxic Avenger in true cult movie fashion generated a huge fan base, it was sequels ahoy from there, as we got the Toxic Avenger part two in 1989. I've always loved this movie's poster. Look at Toxie there holding up that woman in a bikini while firing a rifle. This time round, Toxie travels to Japan to fight an evil organization known as Apocalypse Incorporated. Then came the Toxic Avenger 3, The Last Temptation of Toxie, which also came out in 1989. Apparently this one was filmed at the same time as part two and was meant to be one film, but it was too big, so the movie was split into two. But I tend to find that with fans, this one is the weakest link. But then finally in the year 2000, the Toxic Avenger came back to sweep away the crime and villainy of Tromaville once more in Citizen Toxie, The Toxic Avenger 4. And this one is viewed in a much more positive light than the previous two entries. Number 5, The Animated Series. Believe it or not, but The Toxic Avenger, one of the most violent and disgusting movies ever, actually got a children's cartoon in the form of The Toxic Crusaders. And this time, Toxie was green. The animated series came out in 1990, in the height of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles craze, and I think that The Toxic Crusaders was trying to proclaim to be the next big animated mutant show, but it just never really took off. It does deviate from the movie, like this time Toxie has fellow toxic sidekicks, including Nozone who is a blue skinned being with a big nose who has the superpower of sneezing, and Major Disaster, who thanks to toxic waste is a sort of half soldier, half plant hybrid. And of course there was a super villain in the form of Dr. Kilimoff, a purple skinned forearm villain who wants to pollute the world. From what I remember, the show never took off because it just couldn't beat the popularity of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And the stories weren't really that captivating, and I personally was never keen on the animation either. But along with the Toxic Crusaders came the figurines, and man, I love these figurines. They were the same mold design as the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles lineup, and the colors and details on the toys were spot on. From my own experience, the figurines were actually a lot more popular than the cartoon itself. In fact, I think some of my friends had the toys and didn't even know about the cartoon. But seriously though, who thought that making an animated series out of the Toxic Avenger was a good idea? What's next? The Wacky Adventures of Hannibal Lecter cartoon series for kids? Number four, the musical. I swear So there were sequels, an animated series, and a toy lineup, so naturally there just had to be a musical too. Created in 2008, the Toxic Avenger musical is still going strong even to this day and seems to be getting played all over the world. Even right here in Melbourne! And so if you've ever watched the Toxic Avenger and thought there just wasn't enough Broadway or singing or dancing, now you're in luck as you can go see the grotesque superhero on stage. I would actually really love to see this. 
it looks unique and like a lot of fun. And hey, I just want to be able to add seeing the Toxic Avenger musical to my list of life experiences. Number 3. The Australian VHS cover was weird. I'm burning up. So when the Toxic Avenger got its VHS release in Australia, it was lumbered with this really strange video cover. Even as a kid I always thought it looked really weird. Like what is this orange mass supposed to be? Is this meant to be the Toxic Avenger? If so, why is he transparent? This looks more like a ghost. Hey, I know it might be nitpicky, but this has always bugged me. Why can't they just show Toxie? Well, originally, I thought because they didn't want to give away any spoilers of what Toxie actually looked like, just like the movie trailer. But look, if you turn the cover around, there's Toxie right there. And not only that, but it's an image from the original movie poster. So, like, may I ask why they just couldn't put this on the front cover? Wouldn't that make more sense? This cover just makes no sense. Once again, a strange nitpick, but hey, I'm petty. And if you want further proof that the Australian VHS designers weren't paying attention, the back of the cover also explains that it's a spoof of the Incredible Hulk. No, it's not. No. Number two, the Marissa Tomei mystery. Yes, before Marissa Tomei played Aunt May, she was in another superhero movie, The Toxic Avenger. Apparently. Look, I say apparently for good reason, because she's supposedly in the movie in a blink and you'll miss it moment as a woman wearing a towel screaming in the health club. But each time I look at the screenshots, the first thing I think to myself is, that's not Marissa Tomei. And yet after doing extensive research, everyone says that it is Marissa Tomei. Look, I've been wrong here and there in the past with some of my facts, and sometimes I've even been persecuted for my odd mistake here and there. So all I'm going to say is what do you guys think? Is this a young Marissa Tomei, or just a mistake with a lot of people thinking that it is? You be the judge this time. Number 1. The movie's original title. So as mentioned, The Toxic Avenger is a great name for a movie. And also as mentioned, it was setting a horror movie at a health club which inspired Kaufman to create The Toxic Avenger. However, in the early days, the health club aspect may have gotten in the way a little too much, as the working title of the movie was Health Club. Yeah, not very gripping. It sounds more like a movie about diet and exercise than it does a hideous mutant destroying criminals. But once again, it was just a working title meaning it was just used until they would come up with a permanent one. But still, Health Club? Suddenly Monster Hero doesn't look that bad. Well guys, that was my look into The Toxic Avenger, the movie that has the balls to kill 27 people and one dog, and teaches us that Toxie is going to use his mop to mop up crime in the city of Tromaville. Anyway, remember guys, don't pick on little dweebs, because you can never tell. They might fall into some toxic waste and turn into a muscle-bound monster and kill you. See ya!